All right, look at verse number 34. Now we're going to start reading in verse 34. Basically, we're picking up just a couple of verses before where we left off last week. Verse number 34, the Bible reads, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And I explained last week, this is just talking about the people who are alive during this time. It's all going to take place within a generation. This isn't covering huge spans of time. This is all happening in one, uh, in one generation. Verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And, and amen and amen to that. God's word is timeless. Just taking a break from the prophecy for a minute. Even heaven and earth are going to pass away. We're looking for, there's a new heaven and a new earth that's going to come into being. He says, my word shall not pass away. When Jesus said this, it's just as true today as it was back then because not passing away means it's never going away. It's, never, it's, it's always going to be there. And he's, not, he's definitely not referring to hidden underneath some rock somewhere for someone to find later on. It doesn't, he doesn't say it's going to pass away for a little while and then it's going to come back. It's never going to pass away. We can be confident that we have the Word of God available to us today even 2,000 years after the time of Christ. We are confident, sure of it. Because his words are, heaven and earth, yeah, they're going to pass away. Everything you see around you is going to pass away, but his words are never going to pass away, ever. Now, men can speak words on this earth and then die. They can even have words written in a book and die, but ultimately those words are all going to pass away. The word of man will pass away. But God's word never passes away. Ever since there's been man on this earth, man has had the word of God. Not always in its entirety, but man has always had the word of God. There has been more revealed throughout time, but man has always had the word of God. And from the very first words, it's never, and it's never been lost. It's not, it's not gone. It's never passed away. In Jesus' words, he says, shall not pass away. Look at verse number 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And again, another reference to the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of Jesus Christ. I went over some of that last week as well. But he's referencing here the days of Noah. Noah is just Noah. Okay? So he's talking about Noah just like it was in Noah's time. It's going to be the same way at the coming of the Son of Man. Be. Now, I'm not opposed to understanding this as saying, well, you know, there's people were doing great wickedness on, in the land, which is why God decided to destroy the earth with a flood. Because the men had become really wicked in his sight. And Noah found grace in his sight, right? But God wiped out the whole earth with a flood. However, that is not the primary application of what's being taught here of the amount of wickedness on the, on the earth at the time of Noah. That's not the reason why he's bringing this up. Because he explains exactly why he's bringing this up. In verse number 38, he says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the reason why he's referencing Noah here is he's saying that before the flood came, the whole world was continuing on as it ever did. They were marrying, they were giving in marriage. They were living life as if tomorrow is going to come and the next day and the next day and, and there is just nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. We're going to continue living on. And yeah, there's wars and there's other things maybe happening, but they're just continuing to live their normal lives day after day. And he says, at the coming of the Son of Man, it's going to be the same way. The world is going to be taken off guard. Now, was Noah taken off guard by the flood? No, he was preparing for it for a long time. He prepared an ark. He, God told him. He had the knowledge. He had the wisdom. And God called him into the ark, and he knew that the flood was going to come right before it came. 
just as it was on him, God called him in the ark and said, okay, he wasn't in darkness. The rest of the world was. And this is the, the, you know, the main point that Jesus is trying to get across with the days of Noah is that we're going to see for the rest of this chapter his, his instruction to watch. Watch. Be ready. Be ready for the Son of God to come back, for the Son of Man to come. Um, what's funny, too, about this is that I've heard, you know, pre-tribbers point to the flood as an example of Noah being saved before the tribulation. See, Noah got saved before the tribulation. But again, that's a mixing up of terms and words and not using tribulation and wrath appropriately. Because... God wiping out the whole world with a flood is not tribulation. That is exa a prime example of the wrath of God. God was angry with the world and wiped them out and destroyed it. And when Jesus comes back and the, and the wrath of God is being poured out, guess what's going to happen? He's destroying things because he's angry. Because he's taking vengeance on the wicked people of the world. That's, it's, it's exactly like the same thing, except instead of using a flood, he's going to use fire and brimstone. 